think for you. Sure, um, thank you, Alan. So we can begin with the first section of the research on the definition of academic freedom. Um, next slide, please. So what is academic freedom? A research found out that there were two prominent definitions of academic freedom that were widely used and cited by various Canadian universities. So the most prominent and well-known definition of academic freedom comes from the UNESCO's recommendation concerning the status of higher education teaching personnel that was published in 1997. So this recommendation defines academic freedom as the right without constriction by prescribed doctrine to freedom of teaching and discussion, freedom in carrying out research and disseminating and publishing the research, the results thereof, freedom to express freely their opinion about the institution or system in which they work, freedom from institutional censorship and freedom to participate in professional or representative academic bodies. Similarly, um, the Canadian Association of University Teachers Policy Statement um, follows the first step of UNESCO's definition. So um, they, re they reiterate the UNESCO's definition as well as explicitly stating that all academic staff members have the right to academic freedom and also that institutions have a positive obligation to defend the academic freedom rights of members. Um, however, that being said, um, it is worth noting that while Canadian universities take notes from the definitions, they still have the freedom to interpolate differently. So um, in other words, um, there's no universal definition of academic freedom. Academic freedom is still a highly contested and ambiguous um, subject that leaves every university a freedom to interpret differently, uh, which leads us to examine distinct points that were uh, commonly made by several different universities. Next slide, please. Um, so the first point that we found uh, was about the ambiguity surrounding the term prescribed doctrine. So the term prescribed doctrine comes from the UNESCO definition that I just mentioned, which defines academic freedom as a right without constriction by prescribed doctrine. Um, and a research found out that nine out of 23 Canadian universities include this specific term in their definition. So Memorial University, University of Guelph, and University of Alberta mentions um, the term without def deference to prescribed doctrine while University of Toronto, Simon Fraser University, and Queen's University uses the word reference. Um, two Francophone universities that mentions the term prescribed doctrine, which were Université de Montréal, Université de Quebec à Montréal um, uses the phrase without being obliged to adhere to a prescribed doctrine. Um, and last but not least, um, a Go University, uh, while not uh, directly mentioning the term prescribed doctrine, uses the phrase political or disciplinary orthodoxies. Um, however, that being said, it should be mentioned that the term prescribed doctrine is a highly ambiguous term in itself. So according to Cambridge Dictionary, doctrine um, refers to a belief or set of beliefs, especially political or religious ones that are taught and accepted by a particular group. But what do they mean by a belief of a particular group? Could it be, uh, say, a public opinion of the majority against a handful of minorities or vice versa? So ultimately, uh, it can be argued that the, the term prescribed doctrine is a highly obscure wording that may create a loophole that enable potential abuses um, in the role of academic freedom. I'll now hand it over to Marin, who's going to um, discuss the rest of the points that we found out. Thank you, Jen. So like um, Jen mentioned, the definition given by the Canadian Association of University Teachers does give a strong framework um, for the Canadian universities to create their definitions from. But we did see that the absence of an official signed document uh, gave a few universities a chance to put their kind of own spin to um, the definition by adding terms out of the ordinary framework in order to define academic freedom. Um, however, the lack of explanation or context given to this, these additions only leave us to infer what the intention of the university were and leaves, leaves a lot of room for the faculty and student body to give their own interpretations. Um, so, for example, in the case of the Université Laval, uh, we saw that they added the right to discuss to their academic freedom definition. Um, so we, like, we questioned that a lot, and we were wondering if it's a valorization of individual academic freedom and freedom of expression over collective academic freedom, or can individual and collective rights work alongside each other in a respectful and mindful manner? It seems to grant individual rights to express opinions and also exchange ideas with others, However, the definition did not set boundaries to that exchange. Um, for example, in the case of the University of Victoria and Simon Fraser University, University, sorry, um, they added the rights to challenge society. And again, many interrogations arise. So for example, what critique 
opinions or positionality are considered a challenge to society and under what criteria can one's voice be considered a challenge to society? Next slide, please. There was an interesting and unique case in the case of Université de Montréal, who defined academic freedom as a freedom that exists within values of inclusivity, diversity, and equity at a pluralistic university that is determined to fight discriminatory or hurtful behavior on its campus and in classrooms. It is one of a kind. It's the only university that like, made a point to do that. Uh, it's pretty progressive, and it uses an inter inter intersectional lens um, to define academic freedom. However, as it, is, as it is part of a practical guide meant to be implemented from now until 2023, we are still waiting to see how these values will be implemented in practice and in the classroom. Um, 